So if we had a national anthem for Christianity and we picked a hymn for it, we probably would pick a familiar hymn that you all know. Most of you, if not all of you know. Amazing Grace, right? And Amazing Grace has a line in it. It says, and it says this, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And we're going to talk about a blind man, and we know his name. His ma- name was Bartimaeus. And as Dave said, he's in the Gospel of Mark. And we have this, this event where blind Bartimaeus yells out to Jesus. And at first the people say, shut up, be quiet, you know, <laughs> knock it off. And finally he yells it again. He just won't, he will not give up. And he yells it again. And finally Jesus stops. And he says, get him over here. And then all of a sudden the crowd is like, hey, buddy, good news. You know, it's like they, their whole attitude towards him has changed. And, and so I want to read that story and draw some lessons from it because it's a great message. But the question I want us to wrestle with this weekend is this. Jesus says to him, finally, when he has this audience with blind Bartimaeus, he says, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Isn't that the question that we, if, if Jesus were to ask us that question this weekend, if, if, we were to, if we were to stand before Jesus and he were to say to you, what do you want me to do for you? How would you answer that? Well, we're going to find out how Bartimaeus answered it, but we're also going to find out how maybe we might answer it and talk about that. So if you would turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 10, verse 45 through 52. So whether uh, we're, you know, you're joining us right now or live uh, or online or at one of our campuses, Mark chapter 10, verse 45, let me read verses 45 through, 45 through 52. Now, verse 45 is, to me and to most scholars, the key verse of the whole book. It basically is the theme of the Gospel of Mark. Notice what it says. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus which means son of Timaeus, was sitting along the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. (laughs) Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet, and he came to Jesus. And here's the question we're looking at. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Now, a few weeks ago, we talked about a young man who came to Jesus who was very rich. And Jesus basically asked him the same question, what do you want? (laughs) But there's an interesting contrast between the young man and Bartimaeus. Let me just draw those out because I think this is important for understanding the context of the Gospel of Mark. Because what Mark is doing is he's going to use this blind Bartimaeus as a literary device, but he's also there, he's he's wanting us to see the flow of what he's trying to do. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to get us, as we read the Gospel of Mark, to understand the mission of Jesus. It's not just that he went here and, oh, he did this and, oh, he did that. No, he was on a timeline. He was on a laser-driven mission. And Mark wants us to understand that everything that Jesus does isn't by chance. It's absolutely calculated. 
So look at the contrast between the young man and Bartimaeus. The young man, is he, he's obviously young, respectable. He's admired by people. He's wealthy. He's the top of the social ladder, right? But when we look at Bar- Bartimaeus, he's a blind beggar. He's sitting at the side of the road trying to make ends meet, right? In fact, when he starts to call out to Jesus, the crowd is saying, shut up, be quiet. He doesn't have time for you. The young man's not willing to give up his wealth and live for Jesus. We see Bartimaeus, he jumps up and he leaves his cloak aside. He has nothing to give, but he gives up everything and he begins to follow Jesus. The young man, when it says, when he finally, when Jesus says, uh, you've kept all the commandments, now do one thing, go sell all you have, give it to the poor and come follow me. And it said the young man was downcast and walked away sad, right? Bartimaeus, we're told, immediately received his sight. We're not told, (laughs) there's no description of how it happened. He didn't put, Jesus didn't put, you know, spit in his eyes or put mud or, he didn't do any of that. He just healed him. Just was healed. And then he followed him. Immediately he followed him. There's one more. The young man. Do you notice we don't know his name? We don't know who it was. We know Bartimaeus. We know his name. We're going to talk more about that because I think it's significant. Here's the point I want you to see, though. Whether it was a rich man who was well-liked, top of society, or whether it was the, the bottom of the barrel, blind beggar, by the side of the road, Jesus loved them both. And I think we fit somewhere between those two extremes, right? And sometimes we think, does he really love me? I think what Mark is trying to show you is he loves the top and the bottom and everything in between. And if you're in between those two, that's you. Well, let's look a little further. Like I said, the key verse of the Gospel of Mark is, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And I think, as I said before, I think this is a literary device. That Jesus is, uh, uh, he's not going to, after this healing of Bartimaeus, he's not going to perform any miracles, healing miracles anymore. Because he's moving closer and closer to Jerusalem and closer and closer to the cross. So he's coming to to a new a new part in his ministry. And that's why Mark basically lays this uh, chapter 10, verse 45 verse out there. That's why he lays it out there. Because he wants us to see this is a critical change in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus is going to Jerusalem. And that means going to the cross. Going to serve. Going to give his life. And we're going to see that. So let's just take the last few minutes and let's just draw some lessons out from this passage as we look at this. The first lesson that I think we should draw out is this. Lost people matter to Jesus, and we are all lost. (laughs) Now, you might not feel like you're lost, but we are lost. Uh, Notice, I I said, did you catch his name? His name is Bartimaeus, right? Which means son of Timaeus. His father was Timaeus. Now, why do you think Mark gave us this information? Why does he give it? Why does he give us the name of Bartimaeus, but he doesn't give us the young man's name. He does that often. Sometimes uh, the gospel writers will tell us who it is, but sometimes they won't. Why do you do that? Well, some scholars believe that Mark names Bartimaeus because it was a way for, uh, to give credibility to his gospel, right? So the idea is that the people are reading this or hearing this in, in, you know, within years of Jesus, contemporary, and they would know him. They would know Bartimaeus. They would know his father. So these are real people. And that's the point. Some scholars say the reason that Mark gives the name is because they were real people in real time. And they, when people read this gospel, when they heard this gospel, they said, oh, I know Bartimaeus. I know his father. It gave credibility. Now, I think it's interesting, and that may be, but I think there's something more than that. I think what Mark is saying is this. It would have been enough just to say his name is Bartimaeus. But he says his father is Timaeus, right? Now, what is that, what is that all about? I think what Mark is trying to show us is that Bartimaeus was a son who had a father. 
And his father had a son who was blind. These are real people. These are not just illustrations. They're real. Can you imagine having a child who is blind? Can you imagine him begging to make it in life? These are real people. And he was ignored and overlooked. Bartimaeus was overlooked and forgotten. He was, you know, you saw the reaction of the crowd as we read the passage, right? He was like nothing. He was like dust. He was like, you know, get out of the way. You're in the way. He was ignored by so many people except for one. Except for one. I believe that sometimes we're in danger of overlooking many of the sons and daughters. And especially during this holiday season, we're too busy. Maybe we see somebody in our... You know, I believe that, that as we go through our day and as we go through our life, that God sometimes has... Well, you read the New Testament, it's pretty clear. Jesus says, you gave me water and you visited me in prison and you gave me clothes and you... You gave me shelter. You gave me meal. And he's, well, when did I do that? I don't remember doing that. When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. And what Jesus is saying is that sometimes he sets up appointments that you don't have on your phone. You don't have on your calendar. But they're there. And all of a sudden, somebody pops into your life. And, and it's Jesus saying, this is the moment. This is, Bartima this is a Bartimaeus moment. Don't miss this moment. I'm showing up in your life at this moment. You're the only one I'm going to ask to minister at this point, at this person, at this place. And I, I think during the holiday season, we need to remember that there are moments that as we go through that we can be too busy going about our lives and just stop. And that's what I love about Jesus. Like I said before, Mark is essentially saying there are going to be no more miracles from this time on. The, fir the first miracle is the healing of the blind man. This is like the bookend. This is the, the other one. So from now on, Jesus isn't going to perform healing miracles. He's on a mission. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a task-driven person. It is hard for me when I have something that I feel is critical that needs to get done. To, it's almost like somebody is like, yelling in my ears get it done get it done get it done that everything else seems like no come on stop bothering me i gotta get this done and i feel as though jesus was on the mission of missions and yet all of a sudden this man cries out and jesus stops he stops he says who is that jesus did that a lot do you notice that Remember he was walking and somebody touched him. He, hey, who touched me? His disciples go, are you kidding me? You're, you're in a mob. Everybody's touching you. But no, somebody, somebody touched me. I, I find it so encouraging to know that Jesus is on this eternal rescue mission. And in the midst of all the busyness and all the importance and all the significance of it, he's willing to just stop and take care of somebody that everyone else overlooked, that no one else cared about, that everybody had written off. You may think, does Jesus care for me? Does he even know about me? I think the story of Spartimaeus screams to you. Yeah, he does. He know, not only knows about you, but he cares about you. And I would just say, may, may we be as aware of those moments, those, those divine moments that Jesus places before us where somebody comes and it's always, not always, I shouldn't say always, it just feels that way, right? It's going to come at an unopportune time. It's going to come at a time where you go, I like it. <laughs> and you just got to stop. Especially during this holiday season. Just be aware of those God moments. See, we always think of these God moments as God coming and blessing us. Have you ever thought about it as you being God's blessing to someone else? Those are the God moments. 
goes both ways, right? I mean, I've had those happen to me where people have blessed me out of the blue. I mean, just like out of the blue, and I'm going, oh, that's, that's totally from God. I Just crazy good. Well, why can't we be that to someone else? So that's the first lesson, all right? Here's the second lesson. Spiritually blind people need their sight restored by Jesus. Now, the the story of Bartimaeus shows us that every one of us is blind. And I think that's the point of the story. It's not that, you know, he healed the blind man. Yes, that's the story. But there's a spiritual significance there. Because we talked a little bit about how the, spiritual, or the, the physical blindness was Mark's way of, of using it as a literal device, a literary device, to show that the disciples were not quite getting what Jesus was doing. They believed he was sent from God, but they didn't know why he was sent. Even Bartimaeus says, you're the Messiah, (laughs) you know. But he didn't understand why Jesus had come. But Mark tells us why Jesus came in Mark 10, 45, right? He tells us the mission. That's the mission statement. But the point is, every one of us is born spiritually blind. And only Jesus can restore our spiritual sight. And... This is interesting because the man asked Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? And he says, give me my physical sight. I don't know if you saw this. This was uh, the last two weeks. So uh, I'm going to show you a video clip, but I want to explain it before we, we look at it. So there's this young boy, and he's in a classroom. And you're going to see him. And he can see, but he can't see. He can see, but he can't see colors. He's colorblind. I mean, he's never seen a color. Now look around the room you're in and look at all the colors. Imagine that you you can see, but you can't see. This is his whole life. His whole life, he couldn't see. And the principal is going to give him a pair of glasses where he's able to see color for the first time. Watch that video. Okay? They're all yours. Okay, they're all yours. Let's see what it see what it does. <laughs> so what do you think there? Let's see it go. That's awesome. Hey, come here. Come here, dude. Oh, that's a bad boy. Oh. Mom, you better get in there too. That is so awesome. I told you it's going to be a little emotional. <laughs> hey, now that just tells you how beautiful of a world you have. God and I got to see it for the first time, right? So be happy. Be appreciative of it. All right? <laughs> Can you imagine what it would be like never to see color? And all of a sudden, you put the glasses on, you, you put them on. And all of a sudden, you see the colors that you never saw in your life. Things that you never knew were there are there. You see from a new perspective. You see a new depth, a new richness. You see things that you can't, you've heard words trying to describe them, but now you actually see them. What an amazing time that must have been for that young man. And see... The point of this young man is that he could see, but he couldn't see, right? He could see, but he couldn't see. And then when he put the glasses on, all of a sudden he saw a new dimension that he never saw before. And he said, you could see the reaction. The reaction was very, it was so typical of a boy his age. Who wants to be the center of attention, right? And, you know, he's trying to be cool, but it's like it's overwhelming to him, as it would be to every one of us, right? He's just overwhelmed with emotion because for the first time he sees like we see. So Jesus comes to Bartimaeus, and he thinks, my biggest problem is I'm physically blind. I've got to beg. And this was indeed a critical need. But Jesus asks him, he says, 
What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Do you remember the disciples? Jesus asked his disciples, they were walking on the road and they were arguing, who's the greatest? I'm the greatest. I want to be seated on the right and the left. And they had all this argument. We've been talking about that the last couple of weeks. And he asked them the question. He says, what do you want me to do for you? And they, they answered it. They said, we want to sit on ro- thrones and reign with you. <laughs> That's what we want. He asked Bartimaeus, and he responds, Rabbi, I just want to see. I just want to see. Well, the disciples' answer wasn't very good. I mean, it fit the time, it fit the culture, it fit, you know, it, it, it would, it, you say, well, Bartimaeus, that's a much more significant ask. But you know what? Even his ask, if Jesus just gave him physical sight, still going to die one day, right? You see, I want to ask you, if Jesus, if you were sitting down at dinner with Jesus, and he were to look across the table at you and say, what do you want me to do for you? How would you answer that? I think some of us would say, Lord, I want to be healed. I'm sick. Lord, I need help in my finances. I'm not making it. Lord, I have these relationships that are going south, and I I really don't know how to to fix them. I need help. Lord, I have this family that our relationships are just strained. They're just horrible, and I I just, I wish they could be healed. we, We might come up with a whole bunch of things. We might say, well, Lord, my marriage, heal my marriage. Those are, those are not bad things to ask for. But what is the best answer to the question when Jesus looks at you and says, what do you want me to give to you? What do you want me to do for you? I'm going to suggest that the best answer to that question is, Lord, help me to really see. Give me spiritual sight. Open my heart. And that's the third point. Spiritual healing can only come from the one who came to serve us. It, the key to the whole book of Mark, as I said, is Mark 10, 10, 45. Let me read it one more time. For even the Son of Man did not come, and the Son of Man is Jesus. Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom now you think about, think about that picture of giving your life as a ransom. So think about that because the, the idea is very interesting because what, what we think of is we think of people who are held captive and somebody goes in and says, I will give my life and you release these prisoners and take my life instead. That's really what the ransom is, right? And that's what Jesus did. Jesus came from heaven to earth to solve our biggest problem. That we're sinners in need of a savior. And Jesus came to give his life for lost sinners who are imprisoned. Who are trapped. And like you and me. And that was his mission. To give us what we needed most. To give us spiritual sight. To give us a new heart. To give us eternal life. That's why he came. Bartimaeus understood that Jesus was sent from God, but he really didn't understand why he was sent. But we see that the one thing that Bartimaeus did after he got physical sight is he followed Jesus. The point of the story of Bartimaeus is that we all need to be cured from a spiritual blindness that we all have had since birth. And that only Jesus can heal us. And it cost him everything. He had to give his life up so that we could be set free. He had to die on a cross to take our sins. He had to suffer the wrath of God, so that the wrath that we deserve, so that we could be set free from that wrath. 
Jesus came to give up his life for lost sinners. Can you imagine what that young man who never saw color before experienced when his eyes were able for the first time to experience? We saw just a little bit of it, and it was overwhelming to him. I think every time he put those glasses on, it must have been crazy. Some of you remember the day when you gave your life to Jesus. You realized that you were a sinner. You realized you couldn't save yourself. You realized that you, you needed help. And that's why God sent his son Jesus from heaven to earth to help you, to save you, to, to, to be a ransom for you so that you could be set free. You didn't deserve to be set free. You didn't earn it. You didn't, you didn't, but, but he offered his life on the cross. He gave his life on the cross. And he woke you up spiritually. He gave you sight. He opened your heart. And now, since then, the world has looked different ever since. You, you, the, day, the, the day before you trusted Christ and the, the time since are just light years apart. You see things differently. You feel things differently. Your values have changed. Your relationships are different. You have a different perspective on life and death. You have a new hope. You have a new peace with God. A peace that you, you can't explain. And, and you've been around family and friends during this holiday time. And, and, and you're trying to explain to them what it's like to see color. Can you imagine the classroom, the kids going around and trying to explain to this young man before he put the glasses on, this is what red looks like, this is what blue looks like, this is what yellow, <laughs> highlight yellow, highlight green, this is what it looks like. And until the man, young man put his glasses on and saw it, he couldn't see. Some of you are trying to help your loved ones, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your family, to see what you see, but they can't see it because their hearts haven't been opened. Their eyes haven't been given light. And it's really hard to explain color to a colorblind person. And it's really hard to explain spiritual life to a spiritually dead person. And many of you have tried to explain your spiritual awakening to your family and friends, and you're frustrated because they don't see what you see, and they don't understand what you understand. They don't feel what you feel. It's really hard for you. And I want to just tell you that the most powerful thing that you can do for them is to pray that God would give them sight. That God would turn their hearts. That God would save them. You may be here this weekend. Maybe you're joining live online. Uh, and you say, what do I do? Because here's what I want you to take away. Today, Jesus can give you those glasses. He can give you sight today. He can save you today. He can forgive you today if you want to. Now, the young man came to Jesus, and Jesus offered him sight, spiritual insight. He says, you can't have any other gods before me. So sell all you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. The young man walked away and he says, I'd rather be blind than see. Bartimaeus didn't have much to give, but what he had he gave. Jesus gave him sight, and he followed Jesus. 
It's as simple as it can get. Here's the problem. When you have a lot of things, it's hard to give them up for Jesus. I think that's why Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God because you have so many entanglements. You have so many things you love. But I can tell you this, that today Jesus wants to open your eyes and give you sight. He wants to wake up your heart and give you life. Let's pray. Maybe you're here today and you say, but I don't even know where to begin to pray or how to pray. It could be a simple prayer like this. Father, I pray that you would open the eyes of my heart, that you'd wake me up, that you'd give me life, give me sight, spiritual sight. I'm a sinner in need of Jesus. Jesus, Please give me the sight that only you can give. Take away my sins. Give me sight. I follow you today, tomorrow, and forever. If Father, uh, if anyone has prayed that prayer, I pray that they would just let someone else know that they prayed to follow Jesus and give their life to Jesus. For the rest of us, Father, help us to pray for those who don't see what we see, don't understand what we understand, haven't had their hearts awakened like we have. Help us to pray diligently that they would find the forgiveness and freedom that only you can offer. And, and help us, Father, to be sensitive and prepared to stop and minister to the overlooked, the marginalized, the people you put in our path this week. And may we serve them as we are serving you for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.